215D as well as the 212D which is sitting on top here. I've done videos of these in the past but this will give you a bit more of an overview now that I've used them for about six months live and they've been really really good. So the first thing you should note if you get to buy a set of these what I would do is go for the 15s and I say that not because of volume but because of sound quality. These bottom ones sound way way more balanced and just full and rich compared to the 212D which is the 12 inch speaker version. Now if you've just got a set of these 12s for small gigs they might do the job fine. I just haven't really got the same appreciation for the, its sound as I have for these big ones. These big ones sound way bigger and way better and um, they're only, you know, depending on where you live, around $50 more than the 12. So I'm gonna get one more of these speakers as a fallback and I'm actually gonna get another 15. I just don't think the 212D really cuts as well. I, I can't explain it. It's sort of, it's just way too much bottom end, so much so that you've actually got to EQ a lot of that out. And I only use it for vocals. And I just, I like warm vocals, but this almost sounds boxy and boomy. These bottom ones just sound way more balanced. It sounds exactly like how you'd want a front of house speaker to sound. And I know a lot of people give Behringer a bit of a thrashing online, but I've actually got to say they've done a great job with these 15 speakers here. They're 550 watt output, they sound big and if you play music through them they, they're huge. I had a pretty good set of alto speakers along the same lines as these and when I finally did an AB between them it sounded like the altos had a wet blanket in front of them. The treble on these was so much clearer, they're way way lighter and they just sounded so much better. I couldn't believe it. I actually bought one just to see if I could use it as a fallback and then when I finally did a test between the two everything about these speakers sounded better and that's the only thing for me is if it sounds good it is good and they've done a great job I basically thought this little one being a or this smaller one being a 550 watt speaker with the same electronics I really thought it would sound pretty much identical to the 15 and it doesn't there's no way I can really demo this online or to show you the difference between the speakers, there's just no way. You can't A, hear how loud the difference is, and B, I don't think I can really mic it up in a way that's gonna give you an example. So this is the only way I can explain it. It sounds great with music, it really sounds good. For a vocal fallback, I just don't think it sounds balanced enough. I mean, it does the job, and it does have quite a fair bit of output, but nowhere near the clarity and the warmth and the overall balance of these. And I say balance because I can turn these ones on and they sound fine. I don't have to EQ them, play around with the bass or treble, they just sound good. And unfortunately with this little one, as a fallback, I do have to fiddle with it. Like I said before, it does sound good with music just being played through it, but it doesn't sound as good in a live band situation. Now, if you're in a position where you just want speakers for music or for you know, doing little DJ gigs or whatever, They'll do the job, they'll actually sound great. And they're loud as nobody's business. Basically both panels are exactly the same on the 12 and the 15. This is the 12 we're looking at right here. You have an input for a line TRS jack. You have an input for a uh, XLR input or you can plug a microphone directly in that. The link output's great because you can just run the chain from this speaker into another one without needing to go from the desk directly. So it's like a daisy chain feature, which is great. As you can see, this is how I had it set at the gig. So last night I did a gig where this was just my fallback. And I had to turn the bass down to nine o'clock to get the sound that I thought was clear. So the bass presence was way too much for the amount of treble I was getting. And I actually turned the treble down as well. It's just, I can't explain it. If you're gonna use this for vocals, 
you have to play with the EQ system and you can get it to sound good but the 15 sound immediately better and I had the gain up at about 1 o'clock. These are a class B 550 watt speaker they are very very light and very very loud so you're going to get a good sound out of these for just about anything but if you do want to use them for vocals you're going to have to play around with the EQ so what I would do is just go buy a set of the 15s and I know they are a little bit more expensive but they do sound way nicer and I've used these for maybe six months live now like I said earlier and I've had no issues with their reliability. I don't pack them in any particular way. They just get thrown in the car and uh, they get a really good workout. And I've also run guitars through the front of house speakers, vocals, acoustic guitar, as well as kick drum and bass and had no issue. If you want to use these just for drums, they will handle the kick but you probably want to look at a sub. They do have a lot of bass. If you're like cranking music up at home or at, you know, at a venue with these, they're going to be, they'll do the job. They're way, way louder than my old Alto speakers. That's my sixth month, roughly, or maybe longer overview of these speakers. It might have been a year. I'm not 100% sure, but I've been using these a lot and I haven't been happier with the set of speakers that I personally own. There are obviously speakers out there that sound a lot better than these and might have more reliability but Behringer have really stepped it up with these speakers in particular they sound good and a lot of the speak a lot of the shops that never used to sell Behringer speakers are now selling these because they're actually way nicer than they used to be when I first bought these 15s down the bottom I got to um, AB them against the Mackie Thumps now the Mackie Thumps weren't originally a Mackie speaker they were owned by another company that I think sold that particular speaker to Mackie or they bought it or however it worked. And I gotta tell you, the 15s sounded better and louder than the Mackie Thumps. So if you're after a speaker that can pretty much cover most things, DJ work, you know, within reason through uh, just a good vocal PA, I can't recommend these enough. And I don't work for Behringer, I don't work for a shop, I don't do any of that. All I do is I play music and I have my own PA system. My own PA system is this as well. And the other thing that I have is this little Behringer mixer. Now, I don't know if I can give this as much praise as I've given the speakers. I think this, let me tell you the good points about this mixer. This is the Zenx 1204FX. Good things about this. It's really reliable. Um, I've had this for probably two years now. Not had one problem with it. I use Phantom Power because I use condenser mics. They sound fine. It has two XLR outputs here for going to your speakers, as well as a couple of control outs and uh, alt outs as well. It also has four Xenex preamps or mic ins channels as well as a couple of other input channels as well. And another good thing about it is it has a whole bunch of digital effects right here. So you can choose whatever you like. And um, there's a great selection on there and they actually sound pretty good if you run them with just a little bit. So as you can see here, sorry here, is my effects channel and I've just got it just up from off it's probably a little higher than that one but yeah I just had a little bit more on that one but yeah if you run the delays and reverbs at a low volume or low mix setting they sound quite good now the bad thing about this mixer is I don't feel the overall output is anywhere near as loud as other mixers and I'm not a hundred percent sure if that's me or not but all I know is I have one of those smaller mixers than this without the, the faders like here. It's just got the little volume controls and that thing is freaking loud. I can get a much bigger sound out of that but it doesn't have the effects so it's a little bit of a compromise. Um, what else can I say about it? it? Otherwise it's great. Like I think what I need to do is run a different mixer again into my 
front of house speakers and just see if there's any major difference in output. As far as sound goes, and they always say, oh, Behringer's just noisy. This doesn't hiss. I could, I'm gonna do a demo about that pretty soon. I don't think Behringer preamps make any more or less noise than Yamaha stuff or anything else out there. I just don't think they're noisy. And I have a studio set up here with Rocket 8, with KRK Rocket 8 speakers. And I've used this to listen back to stuff and it's not noisy and it's also not noisy with these mic inputs. You plug a mic in, you don't hear, ksh, it just sounds fine. It sounds like any other desk. So the days of that has sort of gone and I think salespeople are kind of flogging people the higher end gear because it's not as noisy. But I don't think the noise is where you'll notice the difference. I think what you'll notice is a lot of the controls on the more expensive desk will last a lot longer and then the pots may feel a little bit better but these pots are super smooth and coming from a Behringer mixer perspective I had one of these about six or seven years ago and it never failed me once. It was one of the old silver ones with I think 10 mic inputs, 2442. They've been updated with, uh, with the Zen X technology as well. I use this just for live work and it does the job. So I don't know, I can't really complain about it too much other than I don't think that the overall output of this mixer is as loud as other mixers on the market. Um, and I'm still yet to definitively make that judgment call until I use a different one other than the other Behringer one I got. I want a third desk just to see what happens, but you know, they do well. I can't complain, it's got me through many, many gigs. It sounds good and it does the job. Like if this had any serious problems, I'm the kind of guy that would just go get something else. I just wouldn't put up with it. I hope that video helped some people out in making some decisions and being informative about these kind of products. Like I said, I don't work for a shop. I don't care if you buy this or like it or not. I thought it might be time to do an update about these speakers and mixer because it has been some time. And now that I have lighting, you can actually see what we're looking at now. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please leave your comments or questions below. If you've got any questions about the gear, feel free to ask. And hopefully that covered most of the stuff. I know this is a bit longer than normal, so I appreciate anybody who watched the entire thing. Thanks for watching. Cheers all.